This uh, video belongs to the review of the Chroma Match Pro, which is a DSC Labs color reference chart specifically targeted at video and movie making. And um, I got the chance to review it and I'm going to show you or take you through um, color correcting with this chart. Uh, and we'll start with uh, white balancing. I've used a Hero 4, a GoPro Hero 4, and the reason why I use that is because this is a camera that uh, is a bit of a challenge to um, color correct. It's 420 8-bit color, which means that you quickly run into uh, problems with uh, regards to noise, modeling, etc. So I'm going to use Final Cut Pro as you can see and I've already loaded my first clip which is the cam white side of the Chroma Match Pro chart and we are going to show the video scopes and for the white balance or for setting the white balance I'm going to use the RGB overlay and I'm going to use, be using uh, Color Finale and there we go so how do you set the white balance you click on the color wheels you can rename them so I'm going to call them white balance and what we aim at is getting these three on top of each other um, so if I um, look at these values then I'm approximately about here how are we going to make sure these three are on top of each other well by playing with these color wheels and there we are we're um, where we're supposed to be so um, that's uh, part one now what you now do is you make sure your clip is selected and you click copy so now we are going to load the uh, color side of the chroma match pro and what i did when i shot it with the uh, hero 4 was i actually shot it in 2.7k and my project my timeline is uh, 1080p so that gives me the opportunity to enlarge the chart and you'll immediately see what I mean by that. So this is one shot and this is another shot that I took. And I think this shot is better because it has less reflections. Here I have a whole bar of reflections on the left side and here I don't have that. So I'm going to use this shot or take and select the clip and now we are going to set it so that it as as it were zooms in so spatial conform to none and you see what that does with the uh, with the clip what I'm also going to do because that makes it a bit easier is set a lens undistort you have these from crumple pop and from core melt and this one is from core melt and I'm going to slightly reduce the size of the chart so that I have a bit more uh, of the uh, circle in the viewport. So this is the chart. It's not evenly lit. It should be, but it's not. Uh, I just used the uh, left window. So this is natural light coming in from the left and I haven't used anything else. So now we're going to show the video scopes again and 
I've already selected the vector scope in 133% and that gives me this image and now I have the digital image file. The reference file is a PNG file uh, that you uh, receive when you buy a Chroma Match Pro. So and what we are going to do is we are going just to drag the image on top of our shot and uh, because it has an alpha channel you get this circle uh, with your chart viewable through the circle. So what we now have to do is make sure the circle is about the right size. So that means we're going to be centering it a bit and then we are going to do distort it so that it matches exactly the uh, color chips. So now everything is lined up and now within this uh, with this view we're going to show the video scopes again and now you can see the spikes of the digital reference the image file tells us where our charts spikes should be so when I am going to paste attributes and I'm going to select color finale and now you see that the first thing that we are going to do is make sure that our chart is a bit lighter these things these dots should ideally be on the the points here so that's never going to work because we don't have the exact same lighting but we can try so if you do this for example you're seeing that it moves in the right direction by making this curve like this in my uh, lighting setup um, this is already somewhat better and then we're going to work with the vector colors and we start with red and we'll crank up the saturation and this is red so we'll have to move the hue a little bit more to the right and the luminosity probably a little bit m less or higher no luminosity we'll leave luminosity as it is and we'll go to the green now and we, we will do that in succession so And we will repeat that but now we will make other adjustments so that we get closer and closer to the reference file Now from time to time you can turn off the clip to see only the reference file so that you're absolutely sure you're doing the right thing and of course you can also turn off the reference file itself and take a look at what you've done so far. Um, what we did now is um, we've 
approximate, we're approximately ready, but we have introduced a bit of a, um, a color cast in the darker uh, grayscales here, so we're going to get rid of that um, cast. try to make it a bit more apart like it was. Right, and now so this is what we've done and what we are now going to do because we need to be able to um, transfer these changes to other clips. So what we are going to do now is export color finales adjustments as a lookup table and then we are going to load color finales LUT manager and load that lookup table cube and I've made a folder specifically for that purpose and so we are finished now so I'm going to, going to load my headshot and make it a bit better, a bit uh, larger, sorry. And then load color finale, open the panel, load the lit utility and apply my lit. And there is my lit with the adjustments that I just made. So <laughs> this is afterwards and this is the raw hero file. And I think I made it a bit too cool but that can be uh, fairly easily arranged or corrected by going into color finale again and making it a bit warmer like so and if you don't like this this is very very red then you can just turn down the saturation here a bit and that's all you need to do and this is uh, perfect and that's it that's what you can do with the Chrome MH Pro by DSC Labs in roughly 10 to 15 minutes.